Hey guys, so I just came across this video from uh, Cigar on Breaking Points talking about how apparently the New York Times admits corporate diversity programs are failing. Uh, I'm kind of starting this about a minute 20 in, so got some thoughts? Let's go. ...or macroaggressions in some cases are actually increasing hostility in the workplace, racist thoughts, and are having the opposite intended effect. Now, and also, do any of these people work? I have no idea why aerospace engineers are subjected to raise your hand whenever you had a racist thought literally at work. Sounds like something you should do on your own time. So um, he's basically saying, uh, recapping a New York Times report that shows businesses are going from diversity and inclusion to diversity and belonging, basically because they notice that diversity programs are having the opposite effect um, for participants who are in these programs in the workplace. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kimi Katiti. I have been talking about sort of the woke cult for the past two years. And I know wokeness has come to mean something very different now from what I've seen on social media, what I've seen on YouTube. It's now this term that a lot of conservatives just use to mean anything that isn't conservative. And um, from where I'm coming from, I'm someone who believed in some of this ideology coming to the United States for a time and was completely crippled by it. I had a lot of anxiety, a lot of manifestations of what I think to be depression, a lot of fragility as a result of believing this disempowering philosophy. And so I've been talking about that on YouTube. I have other videos kind of where I share my story and share my opinions on certain things, popular concepts like anti-racism, some of my thoughts on social justice, critical social, social justice, and critical race theory. Um, and I know that a lot of those terms have just turned to mean a whole lot of different things now, but I truly believe what we see in the mainstream, the mainstream conversation on race, the mainstream narrative on oppression and being oppressed and marginalized has taken this unhealthy turn. And so to see something like this to me is just not surprising at all, but um, what is surprising is the fact that it is being talked about and I think that is healthy because we have to be honest about the results. If it was actually working for a lot of other people and I just happen to be an anomaly, that would be awesome. But um, it's interesting to see that this is backfiring on a large scale and corporate America is taking a notice to it. So let's keep watching. Now, what's fascinating to me is that the corporations Sorry, my screen's kind of, my internet is bugging. Give me one second. Are beginning to wake up to this. Because I personally thought that they would never move on, but they're doing it in the best way possible. Moving from diversity and inclusion to diversity and belonging, ditching some implicit bias training to still spend the same amount of money on quote diversity, but hiring somebody whose recommendation is stop doing the previous tra training and is reverting back to do nothing. So in effect, this has all become a giant money laundering scheme. Matt Taibbi had that great piece, uh, I think it was two years ago, about, uh, what was her name, White Fragility. The Robin book, White, Yeah, Robin lady. <laughs> and, and, uh, I mean, Some of these ladies who are out there making multi, Ibrahim Kendi making millions of dollars. Charged. Okay, so I also just want to comment on that really quickly. Um, I had an interview with a professor at Occidental College in California. Um, Jacob Mackey, check that out. I don't know if I'll put it in one of the, the cards here for the video, but basically, um, yeah, DEI is a industry. Like, I think we also have to come into this with an understanding that this is not just about helping people. This is not just about healing, honestly, from our racial divide. There is now an aspect of money and an industry attached to healing and reconciling. And I just think it's absolutely crazy um, that now there's this stronghold in co corporate America where it's like, we can't just like eliminate this industry altogether. We just have to replace who is in that position, which I think is a good first step. But yeah, there's a lot of money attached to this. And when there's money and you're in the business of healing, you don't actually want the people to get better. You know what I mean? So that kind of sucks charging uh, these places to give them lectures and to teach their babies anti-racism and all this stuff. And instead, it's actually making people not only more racist, actually no evidence.
evidence. A, it's not changing anything on racism, so congratulations. And B, like they are basically just bilking Fortune 500 companies to check a box when they can go to Wall Street and say, see, we have all That's of our right. employees are right. going undergoing diversity and inclusion. And meanwhile, you have employees, I can't tell you the amount of people I know who are subjected to these things, who it enrages them yeah. to their core. A, yeah. they're being uh, taken away from whatever they're supposed to be doing. And B, they're like, I don't, they're like, I don't even agree with this. And you're basically shoving this down my throat and you're making me angrier about this problem, which I didn't even think was a problem in the first place. The research has long been in that if you actually care about um, combating racism, which I do, this diversity and inclusion consultant grift complex yeah. is fake. Right. It doesn't work. If anything, it makes things worse, according to a bunch of, you know, uh, data that they have in the New York Times. But you gotta love that the solution to that is like, well, let's hire a different class of consultant <laughs> grifters who are gonna pretend to, you know, so we can still have our virtue signaling box checking right. exercise right. that we can, you know, put on our website or whatever um, to show how, how wonderful and how virtuous we are, even though we have changed none of our internal structures. So I will say, I slightly disagree with Crystal there. I don't think you should, well, maybe specifically speaking to the corporate space, Maybe I'm misinterpreting what she's saying. Um, she might just be talking purely about corporate America because again, these are things you could be and should be doing in your own time. I definitely think we should find ways to combat racism. Like this country, America, the United States specifically has had a just very definite segregated black and white, quite literally black and white history where people have been divided on the basis of race and that has been an obsession that is just a known fact, right? So I think people can definitely in their own time learn about the history of this country, learn about ways that they could maybe be more kind to people who who do not look like them, right? Um, so unless Crystal is just specifically talking about corporate America, I do think the conversation on diversity does have a place. Um, yeah to actually deal with like the root causes of this problem. I mean, you could be spending this money on giving people bonuses and raises. Say, you want to you want to <laughs> solve quality racism? Of life better. Give everybody a raise, yeah. especially your the wor most working class people at your company. Take all of that money, give it as a bonus to all of your employees Correct. Yeah. and the portion of them who are minorities will now do better. Correct. Congratulations. You know, just, there there were a couple yeah. things that were mentioned in here that I was like, "Oh, you know what? That actually is a better idea." So, mm. for example, one company was going to open a new um, location or headquarters in Denver, which is over overwhelmingly white they're like let's go to atlanta and that'll just like right. naturally mm, you know help right. us attract that's um, interesting graduates. there's more uh diversity in the city of atlanta i was like okay well that's like actually a thing that makes some kind of sense but hiring a different group of fake racist you know racism uh consultants to fix the problems that the other group of grifter racism mm -hmm. consultants created this is just total it insanity and the the part of the, about the new york times article that was funny to me was you know, they use these anecdotes of, they very credulously report on the new class of consultants that, okay, yes. this is really gonna be yeah. the solution. Now they've got it. Now they've really got the solution. They interview like a couple of people who are like, yeah, this was great, we loved it. And that substitutes in for any sort of like evidence or evidence-based research that the new class of consultants is gonna be better than the old class. Right. Of you know, I will say that I had a massive flag go up whenever they say that the reason they switched from Denver to Atlanta, because I also know that Brett, Governor Brian Kemp and the Georgia State Legislature are throwing money at companies that are coming to Georgia. So mm. I, even that, I was like, are you yeah. really going because you want more black engineering graduates or are you maybe going because you're gonna get more money uh, by switching there? So I'm just personally suspect of basically anything that these people say. I think that the best way to do it is like what we just said, you know, give people a raise and hire hire people based on merit. And then when we have education, make it so that you have merit based admissions so that everybody knows that whoever is there is there regardless of uh, whatever you know is there because they are the best person for the job. That's how we hire here. Uh, that's how most people should hire. And in general, like spending your time, th your time is the most precious asset that you have. When you yeah. ask people why they want money, it's because they want to be able to control their time. So involuntarily subjecting people to things that don't work. And when we're saying this, I'm not talking, you know, out of nothing. Put this up there on the screen. This is just like one of a slew from Scientific wow. American, the problem with implicit bias training. 
in, an insane amount okay, of, okay. of evidence-based research to show that implicit bias training has either no effect or the opposite effect intended when subjected to tens of thousands of people who have been forced now to go through these programs. So it has not had the intended effect. It is a societal problem that apparently they we're trying to solve through like some corporation. It's not Microsoft training. It's right. Microsoft's, Microsoft's job is to make money. Yeah. Our job is to make sure that they pay people enough money and pay their taxes while they're doing so. The rest of this, this leave it to us. Yes. Leave it to the government. Leave it to the news. Leave it to churches or uh, bowling leagues or you know any of these places. I mean, leave it to your friend group where you can sit and talk and be like, hey, what's going on with this George Floyd thing, man? Be like, yeah, well, I kind of disagree with what's going on in the news. Well, I hadn't thought about that before. And actually, I was listening to the show and they said this and I read this piece in what a National Review, but I read this piece in the nation. You sit down and you talk. That's called society. Period. This is not the yeah. way that these problems yeah. are supposed to be worked. Out. I mean, listen, you're responsible yeah. for your corporate yeah. culture, and Lord knows there is a lot of like sex and race and religion-based discrimination that still exists within these companies that they are wholly responsible for rooting out. But the idea that you're going to solve a deeply entrenched problem like racism at the corporate training level is farcical. That's what and, I'm getting to. And when yeah. you and you know, we know what has worked over time in terms of lifting closing the wealth gap, closing the wage gap, especially among black Americans who have historically been treated as this, you know, horrifically abused underclass. And it has been universal programs that have lifted the minimum wage for all people, that have helped improve the plight of all working class people. Why? Because in a lot of times race is a proxy for class in America. So when you focus on lifting up, you know, the bottom of society, this is disproportionately impactful for disenfranchised and marginalized groups. Right. That work has to happen at the nationwide level. It has to happen at the government level. It is not going to be solved by Robin D'Angelo getting paid hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars for some bullshit right. corporate training that doesn't even work and probably makes things worse. But you're forgetting, though, that it makes people feel better whenever they buy a book called Anti-Racist Baby. <laughs> That's what we're always forgetting. Hey guys, ready or not, 2020. All right, so that was a little video. I, I loved that. Um, I found uh, the ending to be a little interesting. Um, but for the most part, I do agree. Um, and I, I am grateful and hopeful to see um, that corporations are waking up to this. And now there is evidence coming out with it, coming up out about these trainings and the effectiveness. I think at the end of the day, what really matters, it, it's not about, um, it's not about, oh, DEI sucks or, you know, the, the new people are not great. It's about what works. It's like if you're coming to heal people and you're choosing the, somehow choosing the workspace to come and do this, tell people how to live. But if that is happening and you have a mission to, you know, help people become less biased in their in their options, in their choices, then if it is working and if it is doing good, then, you know, it is whatever. But if it is having the opposite effect, you literally are seeding racism. You are no better than the racists you speak out against. So I think everyone should always have an internal, you know, introspective audit as to you know, if I'm supporting these ideas, if I'm supporting these beliefs, like, are they actually producing good? Is there data out there? If I go out on YouTube and I bash this black girl because she's talking bad about CRT, you know, is there actually data to prove that what I am saying, what I am standing for is producing the good results? And if it is not there, then it's not about, it's not about just defending it until something forces out of it that is good. It's about being humble enough to say, okay, let's look at the other options that work. Let's look at the other ideologies, philosophies, maybe that we're forgetting, maybe that we're, you know, saying is, you know, too soft sauce to be effective. Maybe we need to think about bringing those now to the table and see if they might help um, ease our racial tension and racial burden. And I want to obviously say, I think forgiveness is a key point that is missing from this conversation. I think deracialization, non-racialization is also another very key component that is missing from this conversation, often gets shoved to the side because, well, I, had, I don't know why. Anyway, love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, let's see these comments. As a Mexican with white skin, I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to file a discrimination complaint over 
DEI training. The seminars are by far the most racist things I have ever been subjected to. While I have not really been in um, a corporate work DEI training um, environment, um, I can totally relate through what I have seen on social media. Um, these programs are not failing. They're the, their purpose of these programs was to increase tension and identity, which naturally causes separation between identity groups. I don't know if this is 100% true because I feel like these people go into this thing with good intentions. It's just that they get attached to the money. It's now their job. It's now where the paycheck comes from, that they don't know how to back out of it. And there's also the pride associated with standing for these things. There's also in the ideology itself, when you do find someone opposing it, you instantly assume that is racism so it just feeds back into your previous ideology um so i do think that you know that prior intention this is a conspiracy to separate people might be true in some instances but i think for the most part people do go into this thinking it really does work um yeah anyway so those are the comments you can check this video out i think i'll link it in the description below but let me know your thoughts and i'll catch you on the next video later